Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals, my name is Mercury Stardust, and I am the trans handyman. And having strangers in your home who are contractors can be very awkward and can be hard to know what to do. So today we're going to learn all about what you can do when there's a contractor in your home. So let's get started. Before we take the question of the day, I would like to say thank you to our sponsors, iFixit, for making this video happen. Now. Let's hear the question of the day, shall we? This is a question for some of the adults here, adults on this app. When there's somebody in my house to do maintenance, what am I supposed to do? How involved should I be? Uh, because I feel uncomfortable being here right now, but I'm supposed to be here, and I don't know how many questions should I follow them around? What do I do? Oh, this is such a good question. This is a question I get all the time, every day. What do I do when there's a contractor or a maintenance technician in my house or apartment? And I have so many answers that me and my team put together. So let's get right into it, okay? Let's go! This is my wonderful production goblin, Basil. Hi. <laughs> and they're gonna help me go through this top five list that we created together about what you can do for contractors in your home, okay? So let's go with number one. What do we do first when we are talking to a contractor and have them in our home? So the first thing that we talked about was uh, clearing the area, making sure they can get to it. I love this one a lot because a lot of times when I go into people's homes, keep in mind, I worked in property management for a long time and I also did general contracting on the side. So kind of both situations. And when I would go to people's home as a maintenance technician in property management, almost always, I always had to clear it out my own spot. It was underneath the sink, I had to take everything out. And that took a lot more time. I'm in your home longer. I could damage something, an accident. I could lose something. And that's always a fear, right? But if the, the renter or the owner of the space if they remove that for me, if they move, you know, a bunch of boxes out of the way or something, that mitigates the problem a lot and it prevents me from potentially screwing up. So I absolutely love when a renter or someone who's a homeowner has that stuff moved out of their way so I can go right in and out. And extra bonus points if they have plastic laid down, if there's gonna be a messy wet job. After clearing the area was uh, to put away cats, dogs, children. Okay, this one can be a little bit more of a dicey one because some people are really particular with their pets and extremely so much with their kids, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I have said this over and over again that my biggest fear has been dogs in <laughs> spaces. Dogs get really protective, right? I keep chew toys and I keep uh, some type of treat with me wherever I would go like if I have some type if I'm going to a job no matter what I would always keep dog treats with me just to make sure it doesn't always deter the pupper right but it at least prevents a larger issue I will also say with cats if cats are really friendly you think it would go well but also that means they get really careless with where they are mm -hmm. <laughs> And then here you are trying to make sure the cat doesn't get stuck in the wall. <laughs> make sure the cat's not jumping in the toilet, <laughs> you know, and that can be difficult. And uh, children it can be really difficult because they, the, the curiosity is there. Mm -hmm. And if they're, if they're able to be there and not interfere, all the power to it. I love teaching kids. But remember, my job at hand is not to teach, my job is to do. So if you're able to make sure that, that the kiddo is outside playing or somewhere else, that's really good. If not, just try to be aware um, of them, their surroundings and whatnot. But no contractor and no technician should ever be in your home with just your child. Mm. That is a huge thing. Never put your child in that position. Never put a contractor or a maintenance technician in that position. So. Make sure you you put your crate your puppers if you can or put your, your cat in another room. I'd rather have a cat hissing and meowing or a dog barking nonsense or a kid, kid screaming in another room if it didn't mean that I, I, I had to worry about their safety right. when I was doing stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go, number three. <laughs> All right, then next up we had offering a little bit of hospitality, like a, like a cup of water. Yeah, I, I think it's awkward when you first walk in, you didn't really know what you're gonna get, and sometimes you walk in and you don't really feel like they want you there. <laughs> They don't feel like, it's instantly like, oh God, you know? And I think that just being like, hey, do you want anything? A cup of coffee, water, you want to use the bathroom? 
I don't want to do any of those things. I want to be very clear. I don't really care. I literally do not want to go near your bathroom. <laughs> but it is one of those things where I do feel more welcomed, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it, it makes you don't need to cook me a pizza. You know, but like I think saying, "Hey, you want a cup of coffee or anything like that?" can go a long way. Just making you feel a little bit, taking a little attention off of both of you, right. building a little bit of a rapport. Because it could be thirty minutes I'm there for. It could be five hours. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it gets uncomfortable. And it is nice to have a clear boundary up front if you are okay with me going in the bathroom and, and using the bathroom, right? right? right. If, if you're at a maintenance technician, if you're a maintenance technician and you're working on a property management company. And you typically will have a bathroom somewhere else, right? Mm. And I've gotten after other technicians being like, you don't really need to use someone else's bathroom, right? Um, I'm very much against that. But also, like, you were there for five, six hours. I don't expect you to not, too. Right. But I think asking first and seeing what that boundary is. People, it, it's their home. It's their right to be able to say what, what's going on. In it. And I think giving them that, that boundary or giving them that opportunity matters a lot. Okay, number four coming at you red hot. <laughs> God, you set us up perfectly for this one, too. Um, ask, don't stare, you know? Don't oh. hover over <laughs> your shoulder <laughs> like a creep. I, I can't <laughs> tell you how many times, um, especially um, people who have worked in like research and development, people who have been in fields like R&D and et cetera, who just, by very nature, they have like an engineer brain, mm -hmm. and they just, they, they, they don't want to, they want to know everything, and they think they know everything. <laughs> and they will hover right above your shoulder. I mean, they, like, literally, basically, like, right here. <laughs> and that's frustrating. It's hard for me to focus and concentrate yeah. when I'm literally feeling people breathing down my neck. So my, my thought process has always been just ask what you want to know or ask if it's okay or we can work it out. I, I'm more than happy to show you my work. Mm. Um, maybe give me a little bit more moment here and there to get settled in. If I can get settled in, if I'm working underneath a sink, give me five minutes to get in there. If you really want to see what my work is like and you really want to make sure that I'm doing the job or you want to learn along the way, I don't think any contractor is necessarily a good to sense that or mad about that, but I do think that like it can make the job more difficult and uncomfortable. Mm. So just get that up front. Yeah. Okay. All right, and you set us up perfect for this one again too. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like when you're at someone's house, can can they ask you to go work on something else? Like they, they thought of it, they're like, oh yeah, this is broken so, too. So if you're a general contractor, what you hear when you hear that is cha-ching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if you're a maintenance technician and you're working property man maintenance, uh, you legally can't do that. You legally, so there's something called fair housing. Okay. And fair in the fair housing, it states that you have to do as the job comes in. So for example, I get a call at 9 a.m. in the morning from resident A. And resident A needs me to do something like, you know, uh, let's say fix the front door, right? It's not a life-threatening thing, but I, you know, they still need me to fix the front door. Mm -hmm. That's a nine o'clock, right? Sure. On the way to that job, to resident A, maybe I get a call from resident B at 9.05 saying, hey, I, all I need is like, I need my garbage disposal reset. I can't do resident B, even though I'm right there. If I'm mm. right, if I'm like on the way there, I can't walk in and do resident B. I have to legally do resident A as it comes in. There's an exception, and that's an emergency calls. This is like interruption of water, interruption of power, um, heat, you know, those mm -hmm, kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, I often tell people that if, if, if you're having a leak, right, really make sure you explain that because I could, you know, kind of put prioritize that. And honestly, I would want to prioritize that. Right. So as a technician, even if you're trying to do what you think is best in that moment, you really can't. You have to do what's best for them. So I can't legally do anything without you calling into the office or mm. emailing the office and putting a work request or work order in. And the reason why that exists is because then that's accountability for the property management company. That if you come at them saying, hey, you know what? This was never taken care of. Mm. Well, then they can go through that because that's also fair housing. Right. So there's your top five. 
That's what we, uh, what I suggest. I hope I didn't miss anything. If you're a contractor or, or maintenance technician, please throw me in your top five. Uh, and just remember this, none of this is concrete. Do what you think is best. Remember, it's your home, not ours. Treat it as such, and I hope that helps. Yeah, teamwork. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> And remember, if you find yourself in a situation that makes you feel uncomfortable and isolated and alone, you are absolutely okay in your rights to ask a friend to come over or someone else that you trust to come over and wait with you while the contractor is doing their job or technician is doing their job. A lot of contractors and technicians don't mind if you're there or don't mind if you're not. It's okay. But having that up front can take a whole lot of the pressure off don't be afraid to ask about what is happening, okay? The etiquette's different for every single person. And just remember, it's your home, okay? Regardless if you rent or not, it's your home, and we should treat it like that, okay? Remember, you're worth the time it takes to have your home be your home. Have a good day, take care, and bye-bye! Hey there, hi. Hey there, hi, my name is Mercury and I am the trans. Hey, why am I touching my boob? <laughs> hey there, hi, my name is Mercury and I am the trans handyman. You know, having.